All right. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Can you see the board? Yes, no in the comments section. All right, good deal. All right, uh, we'll wait a couple more minutes before we get started. So something that I learned last time is even though I'm seeing it backwards on my screen, it's actually shows correct on the other screen. So something uh, I guess I learned. I was all worried about it and didn't have anything to worry about. So. Everybody getting your notes ready. Questions to ask? Give it a, about 45 more seconds and we'll start jumping into it a little bit. All right, we have someone from Weatherford. Where's everybody else from? Alvarado, all right. All right. Well, thanks for hopping on this evening. Uh, topic of conversation uh, this evening is going to be solar. We did one last week on generators. Um, there's going to be some commonalities in some of the things that we're discussing. Uh, as far as overall usage of what you're trying to produce because of what you're trying to use it for. Um, so that theory is still going to be the same and we can we can kind of go through that if, uh, if anyone has any questions on that um, or we can handle that offline. So um, the topic of tonight is solar. Um, I don't know what everybody thinks about when you think about solar or solar panels, um, just grabbing that energy out of the, the air and all of a sudden having electricity. Um, I know years ago, uh, I thought about, well, how would I power my well pump if, uh, if we lose power due to, um, you know, natural disaster or even just a thunderstorm, uh, anything like that, because we have animals, uh, obviously we need to flush our toilets. We have a large family need to do that. Um, but then drinking water for us and our animals is very, very important, especially if it's July and it's 105 degrees outside, uh, which is more common the issue that we have here in Texas than the zero degree temperatures that we had a couple weeks ago. Um, so the reason why I wanted to pop on here and kind of enter this part of the spectrum is because I heard a lot of people talking about generators and then solar and how to utilize those uh, different functions of energy. Um, and just like we talked about last week about generators, I don't want y'all to just jump in to getting solar and not know anything about it. There's, there's different types in the, in the spectrum. There's different ways to go about it. Um, a friend of mine came to me a few weeks ago, said, hey, we have some solar guys coming to the neighborhood. Uh, they're putting up these systems, and I think I want to get it. Check it out. And so 
I started asking him questions about it and going through it. Um, and <laughs> when he when he told me the price tag, I was like, oh my goodness, uh, that sounds like a lot. And um, and it was forty thousand dollars. And so I was like, wow, man. I, I, let me do the quick math. And I did some quick math on it. Pulled up a couple different uh, devices and parts, and I was like, man, you're you're maybe paying fifteen thousand dollars for those parts and materials, and you're paying twenty five thousand dollars for them to install it or and or bank charges. And so when you really look at that he's not really getting a lot of bang for his buck there because more than half of it is just going into someone's pocket and he's not getting the value of that. Um, through a sequence of events, he got that system down to $18,000 from 40. So there's, there's know-how that, that we need to, um, and we, there's research that needs to be done before we just go jump into a project. Uh, it's, it's very, very interesting and it's very, very fun. It's very, very cool. Um, to be able to just take energy out of the air and bring it in and start using it. But there's a lot that goes into that. So we're going to discuss some of the things. Um, I've got a drawing on this board. And I'm just going to walk you through it. Um, and then we can get into some specific questions. Um, so we have our solar panels. Um, these solar panels, you know, you can do an array of whatever size to how many, uh, whatever wattage you're trying to gain from. And so uh, I've just got three up here. It can just represent the solar panels. Um, the solar panels, they are a, uh, a DC, a direct current voltage. So in our area in Texas, you're going to get between four and five hours of peak time per day. Um, that's important when you're designing your system. You need to know uh, what the peak sun is for your area and for uh, your application. So as it comes in, uh, the, the panels will go either into a micro inverter if you're doing a grid tied system, or in this example, it is going into your charge controller. That's where you can put them in series, put them in parallel, depending on how you want to run your string, and you bring it into your charge controller. The charge controller is still DC. It's still direct current. It then if you're using a MPPT uh, multi power point tracking uh, controller, it's going to take your high voltage and putting it in, it's going to change that over and adjust it for the battery voltage that you want to run. Whether that's 12 volts, whether it's 24, 48, it's going to do that. So that's where the transfer of that energy from a high voltage DC goes to a smaller voltage, which is more manageable to feed to the batteries. Um, at that point, you have your positive and negative that go over to your batteries, and then that hooks into your inverter. We're still on the direct current side, both the DC side of your, of your inverter. And then on the other part of the inverter, uh, we have where it swaps over to what we're using in our homes, alternating current, AC. So when you have that, um, many people have an, a, an inverter in their car. They hook into uh, the 12 volt uh, socket or cigarette lighter in their vehicle. And it, that's DC power that's coming from the vehicle. That little inverter swaps it, changes it into uh, AC voltage. And at that point, um, you have 120 volts to power up your laptop, uh, charge your phone through a charger, those kind of things. For a larger system, you're going to have multiple lines of hot. So you're going to have 120 on one leg, 120 on the other to get your 240. And then you're going to have your neutral. And that's going to go over um, if you have a power distribution panel, which I strongly suggest if you're putting this in your house, that you get that. So you can pull that into, the, into your power distribution channel uh, panel. You can hook up your generator into that same panel. You can hook to the grid if you have an interconnection agreement with your power company. Um, and then you also hook in your load out, which is going to your house or to some sort of load that you're trying to power. So that's the quick version of what we're going to be talking about. 
Um, to get into, if you're trying to push this to the grid, um, that's a deeper conversation that you need to have. You need to get with a solar installer and you need to have them work through the project designing it because they're going to have to go uh, to the uh, a website and they're going to have to put in a whole bunch of information as far as your design and the aspects of your of your build so that they can generate that interconnection agreement. Uh, that's something that you want an installer for. Um, and maybe down the line, we can find somebody to help you out. Um, but today we're going to focus more on a more of an off grid setup because we're trying to put you in a scenario that if the power goes out on the grid, you have the ability to generate power to keep your refrigerator on, to get that well pump, pump and water for you, those types of things. Um, so some things to kind of think through in this. Um, when you're designing it, how much are you trying to power up? So what are you trying to power? Uh, last week, we went through those numbers. Uh, we went through uh, just quick math of how to uh, figure that up. Uh, let's say you're running 240 volt, 10 amps to your well pump. Uh, that's going to be 2,400 watts. So you're going to need something that's going to push 2,400 watts uh, while it's running. It's going to draw more than that when it first fires up. So you may want to figure on about 4,000 watts to make that happen. So when it turns on, it's it's got the supply that it needs to kick that pump on. Um, so if you want to know more about that, you can go back to last week's video on generators and we went into it a little bit more in depth, but, um, I'm going to move forward from that. If anybody needs me to go through that again, uh, let me know or go watch the other video. One thing that I do want to point out as far as, uh, doing our math for wattage, I've got three scenarios that give us 9,600 watts or 9.6 kilowatts. And this is important to understand. You have, say that we have our solar panels in series and we've got several of them together. We've got a, a heavy duty charge controller and we're pushing 550 to 600 watt or 600 um, volts to it. In this example, I use 600 volts. So we're maxing it out, which you probably won't do, but let's just use it for simple math. We have 600 volts DC times 16 amps equals at 9,600 watts. We have a scenario in which we're converting that to our battery voltage, which may be 48 volts. And we say 48 volts DC times 200 amps equals 9,600 watts or 9.6 kilowatts. And then our last example is 200 volts AC, which is gonna be what you're having on your line for your house, your two lines for your house, times 40 amps equals that 9,600 watts or 9.6 kilowatts. And so we have those three um, scenarios. They all, the, the answer to all of those is 9,600 watts. Why is that important? Because each part of the system may have a different voltage and running different amperage or current. So, while we might be running a higher voltage with our with our solar panels, we're having to convert that down so that the battery bank can handle it. And then after it transfers it over, converts it to AC, now we have a different voltage that we're having to, to use to, to navigate to get that 9,600 watts. Um, while we're doing that, we need to understand that voltage travels more efficiently uh, than current. So if you're, if you're setting up your panels, you need to set them up in a way that are in spec with your charge controller. Some charge controllers uh, can only handle 150 volts. Some of them, um, your real cheap ones that are not MPPT, um, it's a pulse width modulated, so PWM. Uh, your pulse width modulated ones are only going to handle what your battery, it, what the panel puts out and then converting it to the battery. So if you're looking at 12 volts uh, nominal, it may be able to handle up to 18, uh, maybe 20, but it's going to pull it down to 12 volts. Um, with uh, MPPT, your uh, uh, max power point tracking, um, you're going to be looking at some of them, uh, like Schneider has one, it's a heavy duty one, and it handles 600, 600 volts DC. 
Uh, that's a lot of voltage, um, especially direct current. So you need to be careful when you're handling that. And always remember that if your panels are have sunlight on them, then they're putting out a charge. So you need to remember that. Don't shock yourself um, or get some help if you're installing a system. Um, but that's the overall um, large scale viewpoint of your of your solar installation uh, all the different parts and how they interact um, one thing that is really nice is having your power distribution panel because you're going to be able to hook all your devices in um, and and navigate what you're using you can turn your main disconnect off or if you're in an off-grid situation obviously that's already off um, at that point you can tell it what to use, whether you're using your generator, solar. Um, and what's really nice about that is most of them have a, a mechanism in place to where you can't have them both on at the same time. And that helps so you don't pop anything, blow anything up because you're trying to push two, two parts of energy at each other uh, and it's not in sequence. Um, so those are things that, that really... Um, you need to know, um, you need to research, uh, especially if you're doing a uh, do-it-yourself kind of setup. You really need to do your research on this um, and understand which e what each part does and how to design that. Um, if I went into the design aspect, it's gonna be different for everybody because everybody has a different goal. So you need to have your goal, write down your goal of what you're trying to do. Are you trying to do um, a room which has a small AC, like a window unit in it to get some reprieve from the hot temperatures in the middle of summer? Are you trying to have a, um, a space heater on for winter? What is the goal of your system in an off-grid setting? What's the goal of your system? Um, is it small or are you trying to do your entire house? Um, those are going to be much different in the design aspect. Um, and then it's also going to be different in the requirements that you're going to need. If you're going to do an entire off-grid system for your home, you might need to have three inverters or more, depending on how much, how much energy you're pulling in your home. Um, you can stack those together. Uh, there's ways, ways to do that, but um, you need to know that you're going to need three of those because it's three times the cost uh, for those inverters. You need three of them. Uh, the battery bank. How are you going to set that battery bank up? Uh, like I said before, voltage is way more efficient in terms of transfer of that energy than current. So you're going to want um, more than likely, if you're going to do any decent sized system, you're going to want a 48 volt system. Uh, your charge controllers, depending on how many panels you need and how much voltage you're pulling from those, um, you're going to need multiple um, charge controllers. So you can build out different legs uh, with different uh, solar panel um, size. So if you took, uh, let's just focus on, a, let's say a 300 watt panel um, and the charge can hold, controller can do um, 550 volts. Let's say those are 24 volt panels um, times, uh, or let's five, I always do 550 if it's a 600, so divided by, so, oh, those, never mind. Forgive me. It's a 48 volt panel usually. So 550 divided by the 48 is 11 and a half. So you'd go to 11. So you could only have a string of 11 of those in series, um, which series is, is when you're putting your positive and negative together and then you have a positive and negative on the ends. So um, if you're doing parallel, so that's series and parallel is going to be where you put all the minus, all your negatives together and all your positives together. Um, that's important because it also changes how much current you're pushing as opposed to your voltage. 
Um, I know that was kind of a quick overview. Um, what what questions do y'all have um, as far as the solar project or solar energy is concern, concerned? And if it's something in which it's going to require way more time, um, we'll figure out a way uh, for you to, to, we'll do that offline. But anything uh, that, that anyone has as far as questions go, um, put it on the old chat and uh, I'll start answering them for you. Um, I will say going back, make sure that you're not hooking this uh, to grid unless you have that interconnection agreement. Um, there's some things that go with that and don't want you to get in trouble um, by doing something that you're just not aware of. Um, also, if you're doing any decent sized system, get you a power distribution panel. It is a lifesaver. Um, makes it so much more simple uh, to install. And then beyond that, it's just, it makes all the connection points real nice, uh, cleaned up. And uh, several of them have uh, raceways in them that are on the bottom uh, that you can put all your cables in, feeds through. It's a very, very nice setup, pretty clean. Um, and then also there are different panels that, that show you how much you're producing, um, where your battery level is, all of that, which is, is nice to have as well. Um, as far as one of the things that um, I always tell our kids is, you know, if you're, if you're doing something uh, in your barn, just say uh, you want some lighting in your barn. Well, that's a great project for, uh, for solar. Throw up a few panels, uh, have them come down, um, or even depending on how, how often you use it, you could even just have one panel that comes down to a cheap little charge controller uh, that you could probably get for $20, $30, and then hook it into a 12-volt battery, and you've got some lighting, some low-voltage lighting um, for, your, for your barn. Um, you can do, get some of those little work lights. Uh, they work on 12 or 24 volts, and hook them up put them throughout the barn and you have lights that's essentially off grid. Um, one thing that I was discussing with a gentleman today was a scenario of a situation happening in the summer. Uh, it's hot. You're trying to get some reprieve from the heat. Uh, maybe you have pets in your house uh, along with your family and you want to uh, put them in a room, get them cool have you know right now you can run down i'm sure to any box store big box store and get a 120 um you know little window unit have it for a hundred bucks 150 dollars um and have it ready uh you don't even have to install it right now just know where you're going to put it know which room you're going to use and when a scenario like that pops up after a thunderstorm, tornado, whatever, that knocks down power lines and you have power out and it's the middle of summer, go ahead, throw that window unit in um, and hook up to your system, whether that be solar or a generator. All right. Do we have any questions? Well, uh, if there's no questions, then really appreciate everybody uh, hopping on. Um, I like uh, folks that are serious about um, preparing for things that naturally occur. Uh, we, we're putting a lot of faith in the, in the, the massive infrastructure of the grid. Um, and, and sometimes we, we need to be doing our part to make sure our families are safe. It's not it's not up to the conglomerates and just the government to make that happen. It's up to, uh, to us to, to take care of our families. So um, if that is it, then uh, maybe just put a comment on what you'd like to talk about next. 
Um, if there's anything you want uh, detail on, then uh, go ahead and uh, well, we got a what we got a question. What would be the best voltage for a battery set up to run a small shed for remote power? Um, it, it really depends on the amount of amperage that you're trying to pull from that and the wattage that you're pulling. Um, as you increase in power that's needed, as you increase in the wattage needed, um, you're going to want to go with, with a, a higher voltage of your battery bank. So if you're only pulling, um, say, 5 amps, then you can do a 12-volt system, and it's not that terrible. Uh, you'll have plenty of, of, of energy transfer to make that happen. As you step that up, or as you're using it more often, then you'd want that 48-volt setup. Um, or even a 24 volt setup. Um, it really is dependent on the usage in, in how much power you're really wanting to use. Also, it's your battery is going to have um, specs on it as um, amp hours. So it may be a 200 amp hour battery if you go with, uh, uh, I know Trojan has some that's a six volt, 200 amp. Uh, battery. Now you're going to have to grab two of those and put them in series to make 12 volts. Uh, if you want to do 48 volts, then you're going to have to get eight of those. Um, but at that point, you have um, more holding power. So uh, let's just say for a, a 12 volt system, you're putting two of those in series, which makes them 12 volts, and they're 200 uh, amp hour batteries. So 200 times 12 is 2400. But you don't want to pull those batteries down to, to low, low voltages. So you also want to make sure that you're um, on a lead acid battery, you're going to want to only pull it down about 30% uh, of, its, of its deep, deep cycle. So um, the more you pull it down, the harder it is on the battery and the quicker that it's going to die on you. So that's part of the design as well. Um, and, but you can, if you're just trying to do some lights, you can do a, a 12 volt setup. If you want to start doing some power tools, I would go up higher voltages, at least 24 volts. And if not uh, up to 48 volts, depending on how often you're using it. That was probably a long way to say that, but there's your answer. <laughs> Uh, any other questions or did I answer the question? And like I said, uh, put in the comments, you know, any other topic revolving around, uh, this energy or, um, just other off-grid scenarios uh, that you'd like to talk about. Um, we actually, you know, we ask, you know, you kind of ask yourself, did I survive or thrive uh, during this, this last storm? And um, I think that we did thrive, uh, you know, in our, in our family and the things that, uh, that what, you know, the things that we were having to take care of and taking care of our, our animals and, and our family. Um, let's see follow up on that question lights radio fans maybe charging power tools okay so you could probably get away uh, with a 12 volt setup on that uh, just make sure that you have a, a decent size battery for that but 12 volts um, could do that pretty easily All right. Oh, guys, I hope y'all are uh, learning some things on this. Um, just want to always want to just give the information out um, so that people are making informed decisions. Um, they are, you know, able to navigate scenarios because when you get into these different topics and you get into the different energy uh energy structures and generation, 
it, it changes a lot. There's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of, uh, just like with our scenario, there's multiple ways to get to the numbers. And so it's important uh, to find someone that you trust, get someone around you that you trust, that you can, that can walk you through this. Um, what I don't want to see is someone just get taken, you know, um, and, and everybody, you know, I get it. Everybody's got to, you know, make a living. Um, but a system that was being sold for 40,000 got marked down to 18,000, um, and, and nothing changed on the specs. So there, that's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see that happen to y'all. I want you to be able to feel good about the system that you're getting, uh, that it's a cost that you're, you know, comfortable with, um, and that it doesn't put you, you know, in debt up to your eyeballs, um, because that's not a good thing either. Um, well, if there are anything, any other uh, topics that you you like to go over, uh, then then we can do that in the future. Uh, if this is something that y'all like to to have done weekly, let me know, and uh, and from there, we will uh, see you on the next video.